Thanks, Carl. Um, you're just about the end of this course. You've done a lot of work and uh, you've learned quite a few things, I suspect. Uh, let's kind of give a quick overview of, of what this course was about. There are several goals we set at the beginning, and uh, I think you probably met most of these goals in terms of, of looking at uh, society and perhaps in a new way at times. One was to develop the sociological imagination, was to understand your relationship of your biography to the historical happenings of revolutions in the world and great social movements and population growth and all the, the things that each chapter covered. The second was to understand the web of relationships in your personal life. You know, how your parents influenced you, how their parents influenced them, how you will influence your children, your neighbors, the people at your church or synagogue, people around you. The third was to think critically in these uh, key times, to think about important social issues and not just get bullied into a belief system because someone yelled louder than the other one did on talk radio, but to think critically about how these things really affect your life. Uh, social issues are things that we have great input in. The fourth one that might surprise you how much you learned in that, that might have been a little difficult at times, was some basic correlational techniques, some reading of cross-tabulation, the understanding of probability, um, correlation, things of that nature, but I think you can see that they're very practical, they're not mystical, not that hard actually, and they're step by step in terms of helping us get above just opinions in what we're sharing in sociology and do some good hardcore research that demonstrates some ideas. Uh, the last general idea was to gain insight into the effects of groups upon our behavior, those around us that we talk about in that web of relationships. And the key thing I think that fits psychology and sociology together in this course was the freedom continuum. And that freedom continuum, as you remember, was dealing with people who believe that society controlled all their behaviors, which seems like an extreme statement to say the least, and those people who think that they control all their behaviors, which also seems rather extreme to me. And let's reconstruct that freedom continuum. On the far left, and that makes sense from a political point of view, we had the social determinists. On the far right, we had the individual determinists. These folks thought what? They thought that they controlled everything that happened in their life. These folks thought the opposite, that society controlled their every move. And so we proposed a continuum where the truth probably lies somewhere for most of us in between. And if we were in the middle, sociologists were placed on which side? By and large, they're placed somewhere on the left. Psychologists were placed where? More individually oriented, of course, tend to be placed more on the right on this particular issue. How can two social science disciplines have such a different look at a, an important key issue? Well, the way we resolve that was by saying that in sociology we're trying to identify all these group effects, all the things that are impacting our behavior as much as we can. Therefore, we can really understand the forces that are affecting us. And what was the purpose? So that we can have more freedom of choice over our lives and our decisions. So in reality, while at first glance the sociology course might appear to give people excuses for their behavior, if you go one step deeper, the real intent is to identify all the social forces so we can take control of our lives more and move towards this end of the continuum. Hope you've enjoyed the course and uh, have, a, have a great life.